Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I'm Real Blue TV, and I am joined with Kresnik today as we are now set to bring you our final match for today's broadcast. It's the grand finals between Hefty Fox and Hard Rook, two teams that have battled their way through this bracket. So, hey, I think we're ready to get into these games. Let's take a look at our series layout if we have it available. These two teams heavy hitters when it comes to some players that have been at the top of their game so far in road company i mean are you expecting anything crazy out of this or just standard cut and dry these teams know exactly what they want to do and how they're going to do it i think these teams are going to be pretty confident in what they want to be doing i hope again that these they, they are playing out their own game plan but i chalk and glitch i believe were the bands just had that one in my ear, Hard Rook, Hefty Fox seems like they're playing it kind of generally here. Demolition on Favela is where things are going to start. These teams eager to get at it in the Grand Finals. Fixer already locked in the only definite. Now Ronan will join. And this is more what we were expecting in the last game with the bands that were picked. And it seems like it's going to be mirrored minus a little Anvil Dallas mix up on both sides. Chalk is a pretty decent band, especially when you're going against someone as great as who's that on it. Or, I mean, even slop on it is pretty dangerous. But on Favillas, overall, it's a pretty dangerous character, especially for the attacking side. As you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, those are the maps we're going to. Favelas will be our Game 1 demolition. Yep. Glacier is King of the Hill for Game 2. Skyfell, if needed, will be Game 3 for our final demolition. As you can see, the teams and the rogues set in stone for this first half of game number one of our grand finals. We've got Dahlias on both sides. We've got Ronins on both sides. And then there's a little, there's a fixer on both sides. And then the flavor, Anvil on the defensive side and Dallas on the attacking side. Anvil on a hoverboard is so funny. <laughs> Honestly, Anvil more doing power to the hoverboard in this game is hilarious. We're containing them, man. More power to the hoverboard. It's keeping them up all the way down instead of collapsing under the weight of all of that armor that he's got stacked up on him. Stopadopoulos is, is on a... I like this flank. I like him playing over here. He's going to be able to reveal anybody trying to also lurk in this direction, but he's just holding on to his reveal for now until his team's ready to make a move. At the same time, I mean, Slop was able to get to that soccer field so quickly because he uses that little glide effect on the roof of the building right before the soccer field. You can do that to kind of boost your way there a little bit faster as he was able to do so. This is a lot of wait and see what happens. Wait and see where everyone is kind of gameplay thus far. Hmm. couple shots being traded there, but nothing too serious. And Giuseppe playing inside of Small Garage. You do see the Ronin kind of ratting her way into big on the edge of that cement block between the two garages and already the bombs being taken down because ronin was ratting in the corner who's that found one slop and thana working together to take him out the bomb has been picked up can they finish off another one yes they can trying to finish him as well fanatics playing well to start this game off canny did find one now he's playing on the backside towards Silo. He has his teammate there with him. No, he no longer has his teammate with him. Bomb has been planted 2v1. Bo uh, they throw a smoke so he can pop the goggles. Six seconds, not a lot of time. I mean, Fixer not a lot. Might not, not, might not get it banned as much anymore unless you're really deadly with the smoke and goggle usage there. And they're just going to sit back and relax. Just got to make sure he doesn't go for the bomb. They don't want to put themselves in any 1v1 situations. They're going to team shot, shoot this if they have to. Look at this discipline. Just as I say that, the next pops out. He does get one shot on 55 health. Bomb's about to go. That is it for round number one. The bomb even kills him. The Nax is going to get money for that because he <laughs> tapped him. Not bad. Good to good to end up with a little bit more in the pocket. Uh, that ended up being a solid push, even though they lose someone early. 
the fact that they were always aware of the flanks. I feel like some people maybe a little bit too late, a little bit baity on the side of Hard Rook in terms of like swinging all the way back around for their team and Hefty Fox were really able to kind of, I think, take advantage of that. They were able to get that bomb down, get players around it, punish the people who came all the way around to the backside, and then obviously had a very patient post-plant play as we were able to see there. And the Fixer, I mean, he once he threw his own cluster smoke at that point, he was basically kind of making things harder for himself. It's not like they're not going to hear the defuse, then they spray the bomb. His goggles ran out so fast. I think that's going to be something that you mentioned earlier that we'll see. I think people have to change how they use their Fixer utility in general. Speaking of Fixer hanging out, there's Giuseppe, same spot, small garage there. And to the right of where that B site is, there's a couple shots being traded back and forth. And with the Ronin now not able to be revealed by anything, Thermal Goggles won't even show her as a red body. She's going to play very up close and personal because they can't see her there. Nice. Fixer has the bomb on his back. He doesn't care. He gets aggressive, takes out the enemy. Fixer pops his goggles as soon as the smoke comes out. That's some good team communication saying, you know, I'm going to smoke this instantly. The goggles get popped. Bomb gets passed to Dahlia. A little dangerously, but they still get it done. Look at Anvil on the rat play. <laughs> And now he says, oh, God, I got to come back. They planted the bomb. He might sneak up behind Spencer here. He does. He wins that fight. Slop went down. Fanatics went down. Fank's the only one standing here. I don't know if he has good sightline of the bomb. It doesn't matter. He's got a fight happening. He wins that one. Ronan tried to retreat. Now he has to make it to the bomb, but it's too late. Shield in the window as well. Great, great play by them. They knew where the fixer was. They blocked off his only way to approach. They sent someone at him, even if they lose it. Hard Rook, I think, had a better post-plant play there. And Candy's hard pivot to coming up behind, even if Spencer heard it. Still, there were two players down. They were getting overwhelmed, forcing them to fight multiple angles just when they lose their teammates. It is a great way to play that defense. And that, that was clearly their game plan because of that Candy lurk from the first place. Look at it this way. Cannibals doesn't win that fight against Spencer. They don't have a shield there. Fank can just shoot mm -hmm. through the window. True. Timing was still close, so maybe they could have gotten it off still, but <laughs> who knows. That's a beautiful shot. Scoreboard in the way and all, but hey, still doesn't matter. Pops the goggles, comes through. Just need one more shot, can't get it. Slop using the devotion, by the way. That's what I like to see. He gets it down with it. Finishes it off. Did they? Oh, no. They shot him with a gun. I thought they shot a C4, like, as soon as it came out of his hand. Slop finds another one. But behind him is an enemy. Third round goes to Hard Rook. It's 2-1. to one. They lead. The fact that the one down they get, I mean, it was, an, it was a killer shot by Fank getting them on that cross. It just happened to be... Whoever it was got rezzed before they could really make a move. So they trade someone else out in their eagerness to push over there. And then now they're playing at a, at a numbers disadvantage. This makes things a little bit tougher for them. Getting that far in. To try to clean up on, on that pressure just maybe made them want to be all too forward here. There's the Dahlia link. I was going to make a comment about it, but they waited on it to get that anvil link. Just to have the res on him guaranteed. Now they see. They might have seen Slop. No matter the case, who's that will not be revealed here. That'll give them the intel they need. Can't reveal a Ronin, but you can throw an EMP. If it hits her, you know she's there. Oh. Dodging everything. 48 health. Incend. On the right, smoke on the left. Ballistic knife was thrown at him. It was shot. They tried to blow him up. He's just going to retreat back to his little spot. He does find one, but instantly gets returned on by Fanatics. Giuseppe coming in from behind on Silo side from water. 
did pop his goggles, but they ended in... Man, that six seconds is brutal. Didn't even have enough time to finish the shots on the one person he saw in the thermals. Now coming through, shield comes up. He's got teammate. Have to get through these two. But the longer he does this, the longer he keeps them both off of the bomb and him and his teammate. Fanatics and Slop beautifully played together against the other two that were trying to outdo them in that 2v2. But to no avail, they tie the game now at two apiece. Slop's play from soccer field and in the area right in front of it in general has pretty much been what has won them the two rounds that they've won. I, I don't think there's any way around it. Both times they play up top, they're kind of getting pincered from the side or they're, or they're accidentally walking into angles, but their A play is pretty good. And I, I think that's something they could kind of lean on, but they're going to walk up top kind of expecting Hard Rook to think of the same thing. Looking for any any poke that they can get on someone. No one's going to give it to them. And now Slop will go down to that low ground, snap his fingers once he gets a little bit further out and get crucial information for his team. See, and this is the the evolution of rogue competitive gameplay, right? Favelas in its early stages, B, 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 every time. Then, then people started to realize, hey, let's go A, let's go A, let's go A. And then it was just A, 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 A. Now it's kind of both, right? They're do you see it all the time. They're kind of mixing it up. Really depends on what your team is better at, what, sh what rogues mm -hmm. you're bringing to the table, what kind of strategies you're trying to employ. And that's just time. The evolution and the meta. The strategies, everything irons out in time. Grenade gets thrown right over Slop's head, but doesn't wow. even hit him. That does give them the idea that he's there. Spencer playing around with the ballistic knife. Might want to get it out. Should have tenacity. That's why he's going for the bomb plant. Trying to retreat back to soccer field through the doorway. Safety. And does so nice and safe. Escaping with more than just his life. Full health to be exact. Look at Slop playing in a dangerous <laughs> position. Who's that? Hit him with the ballistic knife. And Spencer finds who's that with his ballistic knife. Bomb is ticking away. Over 50% here. Picking up the devotion. Didn't have a primary, it looks like. Maybe. Could be the MXR on her back. Shield goes up. Has to take this shield down. Has to get in there. Can he do so? Yes, he can. They had to get off the bomb. There's still people remaining to take care of, and they do it just in time. Two members firing away. They get it done. They'll get the defuse just in the nick of time. I got to ask, Blue, did that seem a little too fast after the C4 down? Right? They downed the person who was defusing. They, one person ran in to finish it off. That makes sense. They got rezzed. The next two... Maybe wait till they stick the diffuse a little. I guess I guess they have to go there. I was trying to think maybe they they move same time after a second, so you know he's sticking the diffuse and and both go different ways, so you can get around it. Either way, it makes sense. This is finals. They are they're they're definitely uh, energized. I'm sure in the comms, so trying to run it in, just doing anything they can to make sure that bomb goes off. Just not going to work out this time. B side. Who's, first, who's dad is holding more forward than he had been previously in just a B-side game plan. Giuseppe on the fixer. Having to shift back as everyone is close by looking for their time to strike, seeing any information they can get. Well, Giuseppe does know that Fanatics and Fank are now in warehouse. You've seen him cross about three times. Smoke does cover it up now, but he's still firing away through the smoke. Maybe he used the goggles... Getting back on top of cinder blocks in the back there. C4 comes out. He's going to go down to that. Simple as that. And then the anvil comes around. But the Natix helps out Fank. And then Fank is able to stay alive. And then take out Rixie. They finish both of them off with a pistol. Devotion came in to finish off that third member. One person standing. It's the one they can't see. But it doesn't matter. Oh, he doesn't know. Now he does, closes the garage, leaves, gets on top of the truck here outside of Warehouse. 
They know where he is. They have a general idea. Grenade comes out. That's a nice cook. Takes out who takes out Fank. But the revive comes through from Dahlia. It's only a matter of time until they all collapse on that person standing all by himself in the warehouse. They tie it once again at three apiece. Now they have not led since the first round after the first round, but they are tying it up back and forth. That's an example of why Fixer might still be a bit of a force to be reckoned with. In the right situation. The fact that that thermal was so impactful. The anvil tried to push. As soon as he went around the corner, just couldn't quite tell where he was because he was in the smoke. He ends up uh, connecting back to Fank, then pushes out because he's still in a smoke, finds someone else. The six seconds can be impactful as long as I, I think if you're doing it in explosive moments other than just kind of pumping it and saying all right well i'm gaining 12 seconds of of leisure time you kind of have to use it proactively in, in, in sense in a sense or set up with your team around it like we've seen teams try to do it can still be impactful that way and i'm i can't wait to see more more teams kind of play around that here a little bit slavidopolis early pick the team tries to set up around it but can't get that follow up on it so they're just going to shift down to the low ground and get the bomb down off of it look how far back Kenny is playing here with the anvil doesn't want to get as close doesn't want to even risk getting hit by any c4 grenades ballistic knife anything wants to stay alive wants to have the ability to put this shield up he is waiting for his time waiting for his mark Ballistic knife, if you miss that first bullet on it, they most likely will get away, and that's exactly what happened. But he won't get away from the gunfire directly as he was trying to run through the doorway on the other side of the soccer field, but gets caught out in the back. Now they're going to be pushing that A long, trying to hold it. Shield comes up. C4 came out from Ronan. She picked that up off a dead body, and, well, she goes down, but she takes out two. Bomb gets defused. Four to three going in to this second half. Hard Rook lead the way by one. And who's Dat leads the way by with 14 downs on his own side? Huge performance by the road, and I think we're really seeing why. She's grown to rose to prominence. Intel is uh, crucial on a lot of these maps, and the fact that he can just rat in a corner, any corner he wants, really, as long as he thinks it's the right place to be and get away with murder, literally, on, on teams he had that push past downs? him. He had 14 downs. Unless I misread it, but it looked like he had 14 downs. Well, he had 10 the round before that, so that could be that could be a 4K. 4K it is for him in that last round. So who's that starting to make some plays for himself as well as his team? There you go. There's the 4K. He had 11 elims. Now he has 15. All right. Simple maths here on the break. Are they zooming in? <laughs> just to make oh, sure you can see it. Zoomed. Okay. No. This is, this is the normal Thank overlay. You, you, are, you are only going a little crazy. <laughs> okay, yeah. I forgot. It was inside the little small box there for a moment. I never even notice when it's in that anymore. Get that. The lancer sense. coming out you on look defense at it could be interesting. I love the Lancer on defense. I think it can it can do a lot. It just depends on if you're running into a Talon Dart, you know, that might be waiting for you on the flank because they have that luxury on the attack, pulling pulling out that attacking Talon. We see it won't work into the Ronin, but that Lancer now maybe has to play it a little bit differently. Watching that backside. But there's the quick and quiet. Here's the rotation on the low ground from Spencer. Waiting to come around and behind them but just waiting for an engagement to come out it makes sense to wait for something to actually happen but the bomb gets planted now assuming they're in post plant but just peeking and can't really get much else spencer might have to just completely bail on this with everyone else stacked up there it's sort of death balling they managed to find the first and spencer now is totally isolated with fank low as well fanatics Playing a little off to the side of it, a lot of damage though on them. Maybe this is where Spencer can rotate back up. But this bomb blew, it's 50% through, and there is now just some utility coming out from the defense. Oh, and look at this. They are just firing down both sides, but it doesn't <laughs> matter because walking into them on both sides is the rest of Hard Rook. 
that's a tough angle to hold when you're getting pincered on both sides there through the window on the garage door and then from warehouse as well five to three now hard rook lead who's that not too much that round himself but he was helping out allowing the rest of his team to catch up to him it looks like 14 still and oh my goodness <laughs> Whew. 13 for the rest of his team there yeah that's again just just ronin things i think this this meta it might end up being something that we're getting used to so flexible across the board in a lot of different ways here is rixie he has the the passive talent art just to see if anyone's going to be approaching from behind makes sense of course because they're against a lancer who has played it a little differently i think he used the quick and quiet just to rotate up and they'll catch who's that out with the semtex downing him but they're just gonna get that pickup i think dolly even has the link as well to try to mitigate some reveal effectiveness get that res and ends up being kind of moot spencer forced to disengage again this defensive lancer kind of meeting its match with the talent fanatics waiting patiently in the doorway of small garage there looked like he was going to rotate out but he comes back maybe he went to go check on his teammates see if he needed help but he didn't ballistic knife comes out if he shoots this big waste he doesn't know that we do turns inside the garage and immediately in the left hand corner fink just killed spencer with a c4 as he was trying to kill the two members that were inside the garage they finally do so try to pick up the bomb with the mag glove passive here does so then finds a down on the slop has giuseppe covering him as well i think there's a ballistic knife inside the doorway of that site so he's gonna leave so 1v1 now dahlia versus talon bomb has been planted on the a site right next to the little market there dahlia having to play this a little slowly he's picked up a k30 off of an eliminated body and Talon not looking in the direction he should have been. Dahlia's gets the jump on him, finds the elimination, and the bomb defuse comes through. The defense prevails. It's five to four. Hard Rook still leading, but Fox, they bring it within one. I'd say this is a finals worthy match so far. These teams going back and forth constantly. That I was initially questioned. I thought they wouldn't have a ton of time. I thought maybe they had good control, but two players going down instantly, one to the knife, one to just gunfire up top. Good call to rotate, but just not aware of where they could be coming from. I think pushing out into the open, pushing out towards water, I just too many angles that you might have to c concern yourself with. I guess if they if they're sitting up, they could be sitting up top waiting for you to do that situation. They could be coming all the way around. They know that you're doing that. Just I guess took a, like a twenty percent gamble and it just did not end up paying off in the end. Fanatics now fairly forward, trying to help his team. I think deny these angles that are trying to be taken. They're fairly split right now, and Spencer has is changing up his position every round, as you should on the lancer on the defense. Now waiting in water. Potentially to go up the zip, but Rixie, he is not going to get caught unawares. And I like that. You see Fink is the one hanging out in Small Garage this time instead of Thanatics. So they've swapped places as well. Throwing this offense off their toes. Every chance they get, they'll shoot the window out. Spencer's making a move, but he gets shot down on tree. He was going for the flank. Cannibals using the objection. That's something I mentioned. We would like to see that gun a little bit more now with its upgrades and its buffs that just came through with this massive patch that changed so many different weapons. Bomb active. Find it and defuse it. All for the better as well. Not any nerfs. Another elimination. elimination comes through. Both teams get a trade, but it didn't matter. Bomb got planted they finished off that last member six to four now hard rook lead and this lancer i want it to work i want it to work so bad it is it's just not able to really find it they are playing super slow 
until Spencer makes a move. Honestly, does Spencer just live purely off the threat of the Lancer? Just wait on a flank the whole time? Because they're, they're clearly waiting for him. Uh, maybe just use that effective mind game to make room. I don't know what else he can do. He's He could, you know, try to play a little bit more of a wide flank, go all the way around and make him turn once he hits that talent dart. But the, this is the third time he's done the water play. It didn't work the last two, and they're, they're clearly keeping their head on a swivel. Fanatics this time back, being the lone wolf inside of that small garage. Who's that? And Giuseppe, however, might push this out. Giuseppe did it alone last round. This time he could enlist the help of Who's That, but Who's That has the bomb in his hand. So he's looking to make a move towards the site. Smokes might come out very shortly here, both in alley and in the middle section of the site and small garage to kind of cut that cement street off, or the cement wall line of sight. I think they're waiting for Spencer, seeing where he is. If they can get the read on him, comms might have just came through. Thanatics backing up after the smoke comes through. Ballistic Knife being shot around the corner, but nothing comes of that as well. Rixie now playing off the site door. They've smoked that as well. Goggles still available. Maybe they thought that he would pop the goggles, so he might get a little overzealous in the peaking department. Speaking of that, those will come through. He's still waiting for Thanatics to make the first move. Meanwhile, Spencer finds who's that after Fink went down as well. That revive might come through, and it will. The one on the who's that will not. Rixie falls as well. Spencer and Slop finally fall. They were playing inside the site very aggressively. Now the bomb's being planted. Only one member standing again. It's Cannibals trying to go for the revive. Doesn't matter. He went for the revive, and Giuseppe had his back covered inside of the garage. They lead 7-4. On game point. You're with me. And you know, they changed what they wanted to do, right? They they changed the Lancer flank to be waiting and waiting and making them play super slow. And it almost worked. I mean, they, they planted the bomb with not a lot of time remaining and a lot of people down. The problem was they got all these revives. Look at this revive diff between them. I mean, the Dahlia has four. No one else has anything. And then a straight up 11 for everyone else on the side of hard rook so i think that is just a, a big difference there that downs that are not necessarily being being finished off for them here spencer actually on his rotation here ended up in a pretty good position he'll be able to match the players that are waiting here you can see who's that ratting up up top in as, as ronin of course unseen unrevealed at the moment but it's going to be another patient play again. I think they're waiting for Spencer, but he's going to play it a lot slower, which doesn't really play to the Lancer's strengths. But you've locked it in. You gotta get. You gotta do it. You gotta do at this point. And he's still watching and waiting over there, just trying to deny the flank. Scotty and Rixie maybe making their way in towards sight soon. Oh, Candy's patience almost pays off there. Get Spencer real low, but the time is running out as they try to spray through this smoke. No fixer there to make it work through that. Just Gotti now rotating up top, but Who's Dad has made it almost all the way around. If they pivot up top, this is a crucial position to be for Who's Dad, but he might be caught out just at the wrong time. They know that he's there, getting him low. Two players able to be potentially walked down, but the knife, that's what finds Who's Dad. They're going to be able to heal up, and all that damage suddenly goes into nothing. And now maybe a recovery for Hefty Fox as they down... Two members of that team, Giuseppe, can't find that. It's only the Ronin remaining. It's who's dat sitting in small with only 10 seconds left. Players aren't that healthy, but there is no way he's going to get to that bomb and get it down in time. Yeah, only four seconds left on the clock here. Who's that does find one on the Fink to return that down back to its original state, but it doesn't matter after that. Slop Fanatics working together very meticulously here in these later rounds. They both have 12 downs, 14 elims for Fanatics, 13 for Slop. With another five revives in Fanatics' name. Look how much money he's got, 102k. Almost 103 there. I, but on the other side, I mean, 16 assists 
25 elims that's what the radar dart can also bring to the table not just the the intel it provides but the ability for rixie to just rack up assists for some money some cash in the bank he's got four revives as the talent as well mm -hmm. he leads the way in the cash department but it's all who's that right now still continuing to dominate uh, minus the last round there still on game point however he's hard rook this time they're playing it a little bit differently. You see Talon usually was playing very up close inside that garage door onto the site. This time, though, he's playing a little further back. Maybe he's waiting for Spencer using that reveal dart in case he can catch her outside of her quick and quiet, although it does last a good amount of time now. But it looks like the whole defense is shifted towards the A site, minus Fanatics, it looks like, who's still hanging out in small. Ballistic knife in who's that hand. I think he figures someone's hiding behind the garbage can. It gets shot by the enemy. Now he'll never know if that would have gotten anyone. Shots coming out from dead eyes on both sides. Get stuck with the Semtex as he was planting the bomb. The Dahlia will get the revive, but Spencer coming in from behind. Fank did fall. Giuseppe finds a second on his Spencer through the smoke, but... His goggles are over. Revive coming in on the Fank. And now Rixie is in trouble here. As he finds the down with the C4 just in time. And then that shot in the back seals the fate for Hefty Fox. Hard Rook take game one, eight to five. And well, both teams are chock full of great players. Players that have won 10Ks like Slopadopoulos, players that have made it to the top three, like the whole roster on Hard Rook. Um, but as we take a look at these replays, Kresnik, please enlighten us what happened where Hefty Fox was able to come out on, or Hard Rook was able to come out on top. Now, Hard Rook's first half, I mean, it was kind of, all over the place, I feel, on the defense, they were able to get kind of caught off guard. I think the long rotations from a slop were something that they were thinking about quite a bit. But then as soon as they swapped to the offense, they played this very patient style where they moved, they had angles covered, they moved slow. In the moments where things were explosive, they saved their thermals for just when it was going to matter more than everything. Just like this, the anvil tries to push, can't find him. This is the first half, of course, but they did the same thing throughout with Fink able to just do everything he needed to do there near the end. And they played their Ronin super well, having her play very slow, deliberate flanks with no intel really being able to be given up at all in response. Their, their counterplay against the Lancer made things so hard for Spensa to, to do much of anything, and that has to do with that patient play that they, were, that they were doing the whole time. They just waited for Hefty Fox to make a move and then slapped their hand down as soon as they tried to actually do something. Well... You also have to take in, into consideration that who's that was going kind of berserk to start that game off uh, in a lack of better terms. Hard Rook take game yeah. number one on Favelas in the demolition eight to five. They now lead the series one to zero. We're going to game two. It's a king of the hill. It's on Glacier. It's a map that is insane. That first objective, total chaos, little small enclosed room with a wall. The shape of a cube in the middle. Yes. And then the fourth objective. I mean, need we say any less, but it's just a trapped basement. Four entrances, and they are all terribly uh, painful to try and enter through. So we'll see how that goes for them. But we saw Hefty Fox play against Lagger, and they did not look good in King of the Hill. They looked decent, but again... They went against a team that was also not very good at King of the Hill, and they lost to them pretty convincingly. So that could be the case here again. If I had to predict anything, Hard Rook, a little more seasoned in the King of the Hill department, but we'll see how it goes. Waiting on what rogues will be banned? I would have to say Anvil's got to be banned here. We saw some yeah. crazy ways to block the basement and to keep yourself as safe as possible. 
I mean, you can't be 100% safe, can't be 50% safe, but as safe as possible because of that anvil shield and the certain way you can place it there. I mean, I've seen people put it on the stairs in the basement and it's it's like diagonal so no one can even get in through the staircase. So we'll see how it goes. Um, other than that, I mean, Vi, really good pick yep. to be taken out as well. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, Kresig, what are your thoughts? What What do you think is a must ban here? I was Vi was what I was going to say before you got around to it, but I'm thinking, I mean, we talked about target bans before. Do you think that this is one of those moments where maybe that Ronin that they were having issues with and not really performing that great with, you could be something you want to take out of the picture. You know, if you if you get rid of that, I know that reveal is maybe not as common here, but I think if Vi or Anvil ends up bans, you might end up with one of them on your side. Talon, probably not the worst here for watching some some back areas. So uh, possible to ban that Ronin if you want to play that reveal style here. Hey, bans are coming in right now, and they're Lancer oh. Fixer, so Anvil will be wrong. available as well as Vi. So, of course, we will see a lot of those power picks come through. And we are loading into the game, so we're ready to go. We're ready to bring you game two of our grand finals here on Glacier for King of the Hill. This, ladies and gentlemen, if, you've, if you're just tuning in and you've never seen King of the Hill competitively in Rogue Company, this is a prime example of how crazy it can get, even with some of the best players at the helm of these rogues so we can see i i love the idea of a ship in the ocean with fish tanks in it you think they catch I like the visual put them i mean it directly it, into it the colors fish the tank? whole hallway you catch them put them right there why not right absolutely take advantage take advantage of what you can it's all around you might as well have him up there but i i want you know to see what exactly we need what... to get we need to get a production to create us a little, a little dinger. <laughs> a little time there's lower third. Util, util how many, being how thrown many, at how the beginning of Glacier, thrown. and it just goes ding, ding, ding. You know, counts it up. We'll see. We'll see how much we can count here at the beginning of Glacier. First, we got to see what rogues are coming through. That'll play mm -hmm. a major part because we will have some vies being locked in. So we're gonna have all of those vi poisons coming through. We could see Halo drones from one side for the time being, now both sides as well. Chocks with the flashbangs, the Semtex. The only difference in these two teams' compositions is the Seeker and the Dallas. Both reveals, however, but a little different play style. Could see the Riptide come out from Rixie with that Dallas because that's now his second primary gun. No longer has mm -hmm. the HRM-30. For Seeker? You upgrade that Sahara, it used to be from 20 to 30 in the mag. Now you get 35. That gun already shreds, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But for the time being, Hard Rook lead the series one to nothing. Hefty Fox have to win the game mode they're not as great at compared to the other as they drop in. Two with the one with the glider, one with the jetpack, and one with the hoverboard. We have so many options for you to just drop into the map. This is awesome. All right, here we go. You ready, Kresnik? Right. I have. I okay. actually have it. My search bar open. All right, one. Are we gonna keep the count going? As we that's go? hey, four already. Insane. Five. There. Poison as well. There's two poisons feel like already. I Two poisons already. All right, I'll keep that. So that's six for them. There's two poisons, through. an incense, halo drones, a flashbang, a semtex, a bounce nade. There's another one. It's still under a minute. So we're at okay. eight now. We are. I do have that track too. We'll see what else gets thrown out here. Looks like nothing because they're just, they need to get an angle to do it first and they're just getting gunned down. Yeah, before they it even also have doesn't help that Spensa. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't help that Spensa is holding that angle so aggressively up front and so mm -hmm. successfully as well. The the spawns look like they have flipped and they will have done so effectively. Canny coming from behind, finds one, finds two, finds three. Oh my goodness, the crouch span from both of them. There's an incense. At the top there, kind of goes through the wall for the time being, but setting up for hill number two. It's already starting. It will be the B hill. 
Who's that gets taken out by Fink? Look at this, trying to sneak around his slop, but Chalk says, no, no. I knew you were coming that way. I'll take care of you. Control of the objective, still in favor of Hefty Fox. Look at the scoreline currently. With 50 seconds remaining on this second hill, 54 to 19. Finally, they start to pull away. Trying to gain as much of this back as they can. Getting shot in the back when I say that. Has to take out the Dallas on the objective. They might be moving towards Hill C. You can have the last 30 seconds is what they're saying. Fank's still there fighting for it. And now Spencer turns around to help him out and finds another one. Giuseppe found Fank, though. So that objective will flip 28 and counting for Hard Rook now. They just have to be ready to go to the next hill because I don't think they can really... I don't think they can really sacrifice it, but it looks like they kind of have to. But Spencer and Fank both catching these rotations, whose dat will get torn to pieces. Giuseppe's the one there. I don't know if they know that he's there. I don't know if they have the information, so they could just get flanked, especially with that reveal getting sent forward here. But time is ticking up for Hefty Fox. They have been looking solid so far on this glacier, and they still don't know that God is there. Fink will go down to that peak, perfectly timed. And now the rest of them are going to break through from the other side. Huge incend combined with the halo. Everyone disappears, but a double halo in return. Rixie and who's that? Both go down as the point is contested. They need to get time ticking right now if you are a hard rook. You can't really get away with not doing it. And it looks like that finally might happen with slop falling. But the rest of the team, they're already here, Blue. Yeah, they're already there. Everything's happening all at once to chaos. Remember, there's only 30 seconds left on that objective. They only have 49 points. And they're still fighting over that last one. No one able to control it just yet. 83 on the clock for FD Fox. 15 seconds and finally they start to gain some garbage time in the way of hard rook. They need as much as they can get from that. But at the same time, they've got to start making some moves to get into this basement because if it's already locked down like it is looking <laughs> like, then oh my goodness, the revolver damage, by the way, has gone up. Cannibals, Rixie, everyone's finding the shots that they need. Hard rook finding their way to successfully lock down the basement. I mean, this is the hill we were talking about, the Chaos one, the Difference Maker potentially, and it's made a difference because things have swung back in Hard Rook's favor. Uh, the way to retake this, from what I've always seen, is just have someone go down from every door at the same time, but I don't know if they even have the luxury to really set that up yet. They're just getting picked off individually trying to make their move. This might be a split, Spencer and Fink potentially going to that right door. I'm not sure if anyone's looking to flank them, but they actually have someone covering that back angle, and they're just getting picked off one by one. Fanatic solo, Fink down they lose two on the lower ground but they're still t just racking up the time yeah but no throwables in the hand of rixie he's gonna have yeah. to do everything with just the weapons in his hands he does have two primaries finally goes down Fink got picked up instead of having to respawn and trying to re-enter the basement once again and now they're starting to find some success in the basement all they need to do is hold it for the remaining time and then a little bit of sudden death. So yeah, one more fight. Maybe even an extra one with a little bit of trickle coming through. Spencer's got to win these. <laughs> he wins the first one. Fank, though, helping out. Finds a double kill himself. Third one's got to come through. Beef. Dallas wasn't able to get it. Rixie will fall. And because of that, they'll get finished off. 98. But the clock is no longer a thing. It's sudden death. 111 to 98. They need 13 points in order to do so any. they got to kill everyone off the objective they're neutralizing it out he's got to finish that off but instead he's got to look at the other people that are firing at him nice revolver shots coming from rixie the snowball effect is coming through the reveal of course it's going to reveal the closest rogue to him and that was the <laughs> one right inside the one they had to deal with first round will go to hard rook in a hard fought battle I thought it was gonna, I thought it, we were really down to just one more fight, but because of Hard Rook taking that fight so fast, they had another chance. They, they didn't really wait for that first one. They didn't have, they didn't want to take a perfect fight. They took two imperfect fights because if they burned all their utility in the first fight, suddenly they're at a big advantage for the second one. And they had just enough time to make it happen because of all of the time they managed to rack up perfectly there. So they're, 
it was great just objective play great game knowledge to make that work now we're going back to what is one of the most chaotic points in i think this entire game i've already seen three four i the five things thrown in there's a sticky sensor too halo drones vibe boys and everything in the kitchen sink going in with cannibals getting burnt by his own teammate but position wise they might be doing decent they're just getting torn into by all this utility but they stay strong and hard rook are racking up the first bits of time uh that would be 11 at that point 11 that i could see and count that's 12. that's two more 13. <laughs> i'm flashed 14. But I can't see. that's 14 with the semtex five seconds before that minute there's a vi 15. sensor 16. sticky sensor two more there's an 17. incident on the wall that's 18. Oh well, my goodness. We went a little bit over there. I'll, I'll say 17 for the time. Okay, okay. I mean, honestly, I gotta, the I just second gotta round to... is when you're going to get the most out of it. But still, like, what is the maximum number that you can actually do? Oh, you need a trench. I think you need a trench. If you want to make the what? maximum possible number who's dat double down with a nade. As they yeah. don't even hold this... They're going to get this last bit a little bit of time, and Giuseppe is in, a, is in a great spot here to catch anyone that wants to rotate. And what a different story from the first round here, Blue. Look at this. A fight in basement already. Guys, it's a little too early for that, I would say. <laughs> you don't have to fight for that just yet. Don't worry. You got some some outside ventures to have. Talk about that. Coming around the corner. Wow. Finding a double. Well, it could have been a double. Candy was helping him out there on the chalk. As they quickly go through the basement. Are they just going to use the basement for every single rotation? They just want to check it and make sure. Why not? Okay. We still have control of the basement. We need to go to the B site. All right, guys. I'm going to go all the way through the basement just to check on my way there. <laughs> just to make sure, guys. I, I, 95 to 0 right now, Blue. I, I have to take note of this. They are just tearing into them. And I think it is because of this aggressive rotation strategy one person is anchoring on the objective and they have just a roving death squad going around punishing everyone else finally picks uh, go in favor of hefty fox but it's 107 to absolutely nothing they might get their first tick here but they have to give up their lives for it just to get two on the board and let hard work can just maintain their dominance see and i and i'm gonna get slacked and slandered for saying that hefty fox are not as seasoned in in king of the hill than all these other good king of the hill playing teams and when they played lagger lagger not so good in king of the hill as well so that's why that was so even now and those teams were going back and forth and then you see it round one they go back and forth in that but then hard rook does what hard rook does this roster under a different name last month did the exact same thing in king of the hill first round they're kind of feeling you out and then they're they're like they're like one of those robots in the movies where once they figure out what you do and how you do it, they can just shut it down. And that's exactly what's happening here. They've given up 27 points in the first three hills, three and a three and a quarter of this fourth hill, to be honest. And it's ridiculous how great they look. Now Rixie holding it down. Look at Spencer coming in already. 10% health left, doesn't matter. And that is just a kill zone in that tunnel. No anvil on either side. It wasn't banned. Why is it not being played? Look at Justice Roko. They're bringing out anvil. They got Frag out playing anvil on this map because they know that they need it. There's other power picks that the other three members are playing, but at the same time, they're still bringing out the anvil. Something we didn't see here between these teams. 21 assists, 20 downs, 43 elims for Giuseppe on that Vi. Just goes to show you a nightshade Vi poisons incense tear gas. Doesn't matter what you uh, do. She's going to get damage on you somehow. And if not, the tear gas will disorient you for the few seconds she needs to delete you herself. Great job from Giuseppe there. And the rest of the Hard Rook squad. Let's take a look at the series replays. Uh, as you break down game two for us, Kresnik. I mean, wh what a game. It started so close, but I think they eventually figured out that they just need to move around the map and deny any setup. I feel like a lot of the defensive positions on this map are strong 
until you get surrounded from every angle. So they just did everything in their power to stop themselves from getting surrounded from every angle. They had people, even when they were holding the basement, there was players roaming around up top, watching whatever angle they felt they were the weakest from, from a distance. That way, either A, they get the kill on the player that's coming around, or B, they have the knowledge to turn around and, and deal with them all at the same time so that they can deal with more preeminent threats that are, that are uh, close by. Either way, it was just the right way to play that map, and they figured it out just in the final round of the first half, and they did that same strategy in every round of the second half, and it, it showed. I mean, that was one of the more dominant King of the Hill performances we've seen between two teams that we'd consider to be of equal skill. Just a great showing uh, by Hard Rock as we watched them literally. That was like watching, it was machine learning in real time. You know, seeing these, seeing this team figure out precisely how to, to pick apart what Hefty Fox are bringing to the table. How to shut it down perfectly. That's what it was looking like. Almost a 150 to zero. We have not seen one of those yet, by the way. But we have seen like a 150 to 10, I think it was. But nonetheless, some great highlights coming through. I mean, Hard Rook just looked disgusting in that final round. There's nothing more to be said. That's just textbook play. For king of the hill especially on a map like that glacier hard rook they win game number two two to zero in the glacier king of the hill that means this series will be two to zero that means hard rook will be your week two champions your winners of qualifier number two they will make themselves a pretty high seed i think it's the three seed going into the main bracket and then of course hefty fox they've got themselves a good chunk of points they get two hundred dollars but Hard Rook taking home the championship belt for qualifier number two, as well as $400. I mean, do you have any thoughts, any last thoughts on the, today, Kresnik? Because it's been a long day, right? It's one of our longer qualifier days since we've switched to this new format and the new broadcast format as well. But it's always great to see all these great players keep advancing oh, yeah. themselves, keep getting better in their mechanics, their game sense, their compositions. The teams are starting to mold together a little bit more. And a lot of teams are starting to stick together a lot more too. And that's a huge part of getting better. I mean, especially in a game where you need to communicate, you need to make plays off each other and trust each other. You know, if I'm playing with a guy for two days and he's like, I'm watching your flank, I'm going to trust him a little bit less maybe than someone I've been playing with for months and months. So it's a big deal. I love the teams are staying together and I love that we're getting a chance to, with the winners being guaranteed their placement, see some of these other teams be able to be in the highlights in weeks two and weeks three. Yeah, of course. And then in week three, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, will be next Speaking week, week three. <laughs> August 21st. If you want to play, just sign up. It's free. Just go to CheckmateGaming.com or you can go to the pinned tweet. That's the very first tweet you will see at CMG underscore Rogue on Twitter. The very first tweet. Big old picture of the $10,000 main right there. You'll see it. August 21st, qualifier number three. You got to be in the top 16 through the first three qualifiers just to be able to play in our double elimination main event for $10,000 August 28th and 29th starting at 3 p.m. Eastern time on both of those days right here at twitch.tv slash CMG underscore esports. You can also watch us on Twitch and the official Rogue Company channel at Rogue Company. And you can follow them on Rogue, at Rogue Company on Twitter as well. Kresnik, any final thoughts for today before you leave us? Just excited to see what else is going to be coming in this patch. We already saw some some new stuff, some intel, some counter intel maps where we were not seeing rogues we were expecting. Potentially fixer in the mix a little bit more. A lot of uh, of changes up ahead in the coming weeks. A lot of changes indeed. Not just the ones we got dealt in the past couple <laughs> days, but some more coming as well. Maybe even the meta will start to shift a little bit as teams and players yep. get to play on this new season patch a little bit more. But Kresnik, we thank you so much for being able to join us today. And it's been a pleasure working with you as always. My name is Real Blue TV, and don't forget, everyone, follow us on Twitter at CMG underscore Rogue, and make sure you check out all the news and updates for Rogue Company at roguecompany.com. Checkmategaming.com if you want to earn money playing games as well. Once again, congratulations to our top two teams, Hefty Fox, who came in second, and of course, today's champions, Hard Rook, as they both earn their spots in that double elimination main bracket. 
Don't forget, guys, season three is out. So go and get the new cosmetics by the Battle Pass and keep grinding. That's it from me. I won't be here next week, but you're sure to have a great cast with whoever will be in charge of that day. And good luck to all the teams next week. Everyone have a great and safe night.